So tell me about the conference. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. It was very informative this morning. Um, we've only ever had one suspected case of um, MH in, in our department, but it was very frightening, and I was glad to have the MH hotline on the phone while we were working with them. It's great to hear them and have our questions so answered. Malignant hypothermia is a genetic condition that when a person is given certain types of anesthetics, their body reacts in a certain way. Um, they can have an elevation in body temperature, their muscles contract, um, they start sweating, um, breathing fast, and if it's not recognized, then they can die from this reaction. Fibrillation and the patient can die very quickly. This whole thing could happen in five minutes or less. It can be very fast. It can sometimes be much slower. It takes much more time. It varies from patient to patient, just like any disease. We had a daughter who died of MH, we believe, in 1975. But at that time, it was questionable as to what the definite cause was, but the anesthesiologist felt that it was MH. And of course, there was no antidote. So um, we have since then asked that all of our family use safe anesthesia and um, you know, with, we've been fine, but through the association, I think, has really helped giving us, supplying us with information. And I have sent my dentists and doctors to their website when I knew I was having surgery before it was well recognized. I information about MH to find out if I'm actually susceptible to it. I had an episode in the hospital after surgery. It was an outpatient procedure, and I ended up being in the hospital for seven days left. And never found out what the episode was, so I was trying to get more information today. Um, treatment of an MH episode is really a practice in crisis management, so that involves a large number of people, and in fact, some people who may never have heard of MH before. I think conferences like this one and others that MHouse has sponsored help to bring affected people sometimes to talk with clinicians who may not have been aware of the things involved in this syndrome. And it also helps us who are trying to be the educators realize what questions people have that we can address. So I think it's good for all people I would involved. have to tell other nurses that while malignant hyperthermia is a very rare disease, it does indeed happen. And we are practicing in an area where we have to be the first in line to recognize the symptoms of the disease. And it's very important to have that knowledge and to keep it at the forefront of your mind. I've attended to with the MH. Um, it gives me information to take back to the place I work. I usually do an in-service each year to kind of update everybody on the new stuff that's going on with MH, the new treatment, what we need to watch for. So um, we have a pre-admission test and screening department, so they're updated. And then I take the information, update all the employees, and then we usually go through a trial run as to what to do if there's an MH crisis. We've never had one in our facility, but we always want to be ready. We um, take old dantrolene and we mix it up to see how hard it is. To what do you expect to learn from the conference? Well, one of the last things for the day is to actually do the mixing of the medication. Absolutely. I think any time you can get hands-on um, experience at doing something that you need to do in a crisis, it just makes it that much easier when you actually have to do it under pressure. The conference really helps in telling the new changes, the new treatments, what else we need to look for. Um, so yeah, I think there, I would highly encourage anybody that thinks they had any sort of episode that had any of the symptoms that may mimic MH without a doubt. And House really is speaking directly to nurses and telling us what we need to know to, to treat a crisis. And tell me if you were going to...